Okay, some of the problems you'll, you'll run into, and it's quite common, is collision. So it'll stop cutting, it'll come up as a collision. To start it again, you just push enter and start, and you're away again. But sometimes you've got to look really closely at what the torch is doing to figure out why that's happening. And one of the tricks I've learned is, is the slab build up from the initial pierce. If you look closely here, this is where it started and this is where it stopped. So you can see when it's pierced, it's blowing a chunk of slag over there, which I just dropped off. Uh, so when it came around on this one, it had a collision from the slag from the other one. So there's nothing you can actually do about that, but sometimes you will get some stop starts. Uh, the way to fix that would be maybe a little bit more space when you're setting it up in the nesting. But another important thing is that if it blows slag over the where it exits, then it will have a collision as it comes back through here. So I try to have a nice long lead in and lead out. So I've got a good 10 mils on there. So any slag is formed around this area and not in the cut area. So it starts here, goes around, and then when it comes to here, there's no slag for it to bounce and it come out the other side. There are settings you can change to for the sensitivity for the torch height control, but when you're cutting fast, those keep changing. So if you're cutting at 3,600 millimeters per minute, then the torch height control or the sensitivity has to be very high for it not to have occlusion on slag as it comes back out of the exit. So to fix that, it's either change the sensitivity, increase your arc voltage so it lifts the torch height up, or have a longer lead-in, lead-out distance.